Hey, friends all over the world. Dr. Keenan here. And uh, what have I told you that you could live in a perpetual state of miracles? I'm talking about miracles every single day. What would you say to that? If you could live in a perpetual state of the miraculous, a, a perpetual state of prosperity every day of your life, would, would that be something you're interested in? Would that be something that you're interested in? So um, about, I want to say six years ago, maybe longer, I was flying back from England back to the United States. And um, while on the plane, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, sort of recoup from a long speaking engagement and a long travel and all this kind of stuff, getting ready to come back, uh, back, back to the States. So I'm, I'm in, I'm in flight, I'm on the plane and I'm sitting on my seat and I close my eyes for just a moment. And when I opened my eyes, I was in heaven. I was literally in heaven and I thought, oh my God, the first thought I had, I said, my plane crashed. I didn't get to say goodbye to my wife and I was kind of a bit distraught. And all of a sudden that thought just, it just, it, it just vanished away. And it no longer, it, it no longer occupied my mind. And the next thought I said, wow. And I began to take in the atmosphere. It was like, it was literally like, uh, uh, something ethereal it was hard to explain it had there was grass and and there was air but it was a different kind of air it was a different kind of grass you know i i could see the the entire cosmos in one glance it was the most amazing thing i had ever seen or fathom and i thought to myself wow so Immediately when I'm about to come to, you know, I'm coming back to uh, reality, I kind of see this phasing. It's like I'm phasing back into reality or phasing back into the earth realm or whatever you want to call it. And all of a sudden, I see the face of Jesus. And he speaks to me very clearly without saying a word. And he looks at me with those piercing eyes. Eyes like flames of fire, eyes of pure love. And he says, tell my people there's so much more. And immediately I open my eyes again and I'm back in my seat. I'm looking at the person next to me. I'm sure they thought I was crazy. And I just couldn't shake this encounter. I couldn't shake it. I couldn't forget it. I couldn't get it out of my mind. I, I couldn't forget the feeling. I couldn't forget what I saw. I couldn't, I couldn't forget what I heard. I couldn't forget what I experienced. Tell my people there is so much more. That's what he said. The uncompromising, magnificent, beautiful face of Jesus. And I don't ask me, was he white or black or Arab or Anything like that. Don't ask me those questions because I was so overwhelmed with joy in seeing his face. I wasn't concerned about his ethnos. But all I can say it was just light. It was just love. And he said to me, he says, tell my people there's so much more. Tell my people there is so much more. And at that time, I began to really ponder and meditate on this concept on developing a heavenly vision. And so I begin to take it even further. What would it be like to live from an atmosphere of heaven every single day? What would it be like if we were no longer trying to survive our Christian life? What would it be like if we were no longer trying to make it and, and, and trying to endure and all these 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 sort of religious concepts that we've been taught and we learn how to live under an open heaven where miracles are absolutely normal. And I want to submit to you today that we are living in a season. 
We are living in a dispensation, if you will, where the the veil, if you will, or the 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 veil is the only thing I can think of. The line or the the barrier between heaven and earth is becoming thinner and thinner and thinner. Where we can live in a place where we're walking in the miraculous every single day. Where we're releasing miracles every single day. Every single day. And I know that there are theologians and there are so-called scholars and many people that would try to negate this and the people telling you, you know what, that stuff is mystical. Stay away from that. That's that we're supposed to just focus on on the text and uh, on hermeneutics and and focus on that. And that's all we need to focus on. Listen, I don't know many people who are more committed to the scriptures than me. But I'm telling you right now, what we have done as a church, we have we have we have given people the great omission because we've told people about doctrine and we've told them about theology. But in telling them about doctrine and theology, we have omitted the presence and the power of God, the power of the spirit, the glory of God. You see, the word theology comes from two Greek words. Theos or theos meaning God. Logos meaning the word. So real theology is just the word of God. Real theology is God's word. It's God's word. That's real theology. And I'm telling you, there's an anointing flowing right now. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm telling you, God wants you to live under an open heaven. Listen to this, where it's no longer difficult to serve him. It's no longer difficult to serve him. It's no longer a struggle. It's no longer a toil. It's no longer a fight, but you begin to learn how to get in the flow of the glory, the glory flow. Yeah, as my friend Sid Roth would say, smooth sailing, smooth sailing. How many want to have smooth sailing? It doesn't mean that challenges won't come to you. It doesn't mean that you won't have uh, uh, things that present themselves, obstacles that stand before you, but it won't be a struggle. You'll learn how to flow in the grace of God. The unmerited and unlimited favor of God in your life, in every area of your life where you're not trying to toil and struggle to get blessings. You're not trying to toil and struggle to advance your ministry, to advance your business, but you are, you are literally living under an open heaven, friends. Living under an open heaven. You are not, you, listen, when Jesus pierced the sky the first time, his, his, his first appearance, his first advent, the uh, beginning with the incarnation and then culminating in the uh, death, burial and resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. That when Jesus ascended into the throne room of God, when he ascended into the highest of the heavens, he pierced the heavens and made a way for us so that we can live under an open heaven. The heavens are open to us. The heavens are open to you, friends. You don't have to try to figure out, man, where's my next paycheck coming from? Man, how am I going to take care of this bill? What am I going to do about my children's school fees? What am I going to... What am I going to do about this one? What about that doctor's report? What about what about the diagnosis that they gave me? What about what about that evil report? What about this? What? No, 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 no. Learning to live under an open heaven, meaning that there is no barrier. Glory to God between you and the father that Jesus removed the veil 
between you and the Father and that you have direct communication to the Father. You have a, a way. Jesus said, I am the way, meaning that he made a way for us. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You say, but pastor, I got many problems in my life. I got stuff I'm doing. I got stuff I got going on. I got things. That, but I messed up last year and I did this. It ain't even about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It never was. It's about him. Get on the bandwagon. It's not about you. It's about getting in the flow. It's about getting in the flow. It's about getting in the flow. So right now, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you that your people live under an open heaven. I thank you that as for me and my house, we live under an open heaven and that doors of favor are opening. Things that were previously shut to you. Things that were previously held up from you. Things that were previously delayed. That even now as I'm speaking, there is a release of those things. Yes, there is a release, there is a release, there is a release. You are no longer going to struggle anymore. You're no longer going to struggle anymore. You're no longer going to toil anymore. You're no longer going to try to make things happen in your own strength. But you are going to flow. You are going to flow. You are going to flow. In the name of Jesus, man, it's flowing Ideas are flowing. Kuramas, kati alamo kondia. Ideas are flowing. My God, healing is flowing. Cancer is going. Your ministry and your business is growing. Good God Almighty, your face is glowing. You have everything that you need. You are already graciously provided for in Christ Jesus. Just walk in it, walk in it. You're under an open heaven. You are living in heavenly places and from heavenly places. You are seated in heavenly places and living from heavenly places. You are not praying from earth to heaven, but you are actually praying or you are living from heaven to earth. Glory be to his name. So, Father, I just thank you tonight. I thank you to those watching this. I thank you to those listening to my voice that the miracle that they have been expecting and they have been waiting for and they have been believing you for is literally coming into fruition. Oh, my God, I'm telling you, get ready for unusual things. Get ready for unusual things, unusual blessings, unusual connections, unusual opportunities, unusual alignments. My God, unusual favor. Yes, unusual increase. Unusual miracles, unusual healing. Listen, you're going to begin to live in the instant. The instant. Not just the process, but you're going to begin to live in the instant manifestation of God's glory. That's why you're not trying to wait four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years for it to happen. But it's going to be like this in a moment, in a moment, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, things will happen for you. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, things will happen for you. Things will happen to you. Things will happen through you for the glory of God. Man, I'm telling you right now, listen, can, can you hear this? Limitations are melting off of you. Good God Almighty. It doesn't matter whether they like you whether they don't want to invite you to the party, whether you're not in their association or their assembly or their reformation or their organization or their affiliation. It doesn't matter if you, if, come on somebody, if, they're, if you're one of theirs or they're one of yours, it doesn't matter anymore. You are living in a space called unlimited, unlimited favor. People who don't like you will promote you. People who don't want a fellowship with you will open door. They will be the liaison. Oh my, I feel this by the Holy Ghost. God said, I'm about to use people as a liaison for your next divine connection, for your next divine opportunity. Man, I'm telling you, you can't lose. You can't even lose. Somebody say the fight is fixed. 
I can't lose. The fight's already been won. Jesus knocked the devil out 2,000 years ago. The devil is walking around unconscious. He's still moving, but he's unconscious. He's He's been knocked unconscious. He doesn't even know what he's doing anymore. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't have a clue because he's not conscious anymore. Jesus triumphed over him, make, making a show of him openly, parading him around the cosmos as a defeated foe. Are you here? This is a whole nother level of thinking. It's a whole nother level of existing, a whole nother level of living where you're not trying to struggle to get by. You're not trying to borrow your way in the blessings. Good God Almighty. No, what you're doing, you are learning to tap into the presence of an omniscient, omnibenevolent, omnipotent God. Omnipresent God. He's everywhere. He's in your tomorrow. He's in your next year. He's in your 10 years from now. And he says to you, it is well. It's well with you. No more limitations. No more hindrances. No more lack. No, 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 no. No more losses. Can I prophesy that? No more limitations. No more lack and no more losses. In Jesus name. You are not going to lose anymore. You're not going to lose any more time. Any more peace. Any more relationships. Any more money. You're not going to lose. Not because things around you may not seem in a state of distress. But you're not going to lose because you are tapped into the winner's anointing. You All you can do is win. See, when I learned that, man, let me tell you something. When you learn this thing, I'm telling you. Because I used to get frustrated when folks wouldn't help me and folk wouldn't support me and all this kind of stuff. But when I begin to understand that even when they don't want to support you, even when they don't like you, even when they scandalize your name, even when they talk about you behind your back and call you everything but a child of God and you're frustrated, you say, why did they say that? Why did they do that? And why? No, no, no. It doesn't matter anymore. When you get in the flow of an open heaven, when you tap into a place where your ways, your lifestyle, glory is pleasing to God. My goodness, it don't even it doesn't even matter anymore. It doesn't even matter anymore. Some of you, even as this broadcast is going on, things are actually uh, working out in your favor. And he said to me, he says, Keenan, teach my people there's so much more. What if we haven't lived up to the potential God has ordained for our life? Because we've been looking at people, looking at situations, looking at... The Lord told me last night, he said, I want you to study the whole chapter of John chapter 15. And I did. This is what I learned. Jesus makes an interesting statement. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If a man abide in me, if he abide in me, and my words abide in him, says he'll ask what he will. You'll ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Oh, preacher, it can't be that simple. No, no, no. See, because my seminary professor told me that, you know, that didn't come from the original uh, uh, Masoretic text. And that came from, that was one of the, uh, what they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And what, this is what we're doing. This is what American Christianity has become. Psychobabble. American Christianity, in many ways, has become intellectualized ignorance. Intellectualized ignorance sophisticated psychobabble that we now we now call theology. We're, we're calling this psychobabble theology, this, this, these doctrines of men, philosophies of men, we're calling it theology. No, theos and logos. This is 
the Allah G, Allah G, Allah G, the Theos Logos. The Theos Logos is the words of God, the living word of God. That is the, that's real theology. Theology is not some seminary psychobabble. And don't get me wrong, I believe in seminary education. I believe in all of that. But my goodness, church, why can't we just accept what he says? He said, if you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. He meant that. He said, Jesus healed them all. He meant that. He said, the same works that I do, you'll do also in greater. John 14, 12. He meant exactly that. He said, take no thought for your life. He meant that. He says, seek first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33, and all, uh, all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. He meant exactly what he said. So this idea of us trying to convolute the gospel and, and deceive ourselves out of the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Romans chapter one, verse 26, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the dunamis, the miracle working, explosive power of God that produces salvation is the gospel. It's the gospel. It's the gospel. That's why the Lord told me to write Release of Miracles because he said so many people have departed from the power of the word of God, from the power of the truth of scripture. And we are a church that must learn to walk in the power of God. And it is not learning in terms of, oh, I got to study 85 books on it. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Just say yes. Just say yes. Father, I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Right now, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you're opening the eyes of the blind. You're opening the eyes of the blind. You are causing the blind to see and the lame to walk. Not only lame physically, but many people are lame in the sense that they're not walking in their purpose. They're not walking in their destiny. They're not walking in their calling. They're not walking in their assignment. They are suffering from the paralysis of analysis. They've analyzed their way into a spiritual wheelchair, into a spiritual grave, into a spiritual whatever, handicap where they can no longer function. But Father, tonight I'm asking you, this morning I'm asking you, this afternoon I'm asking you, in Jesus' name, to liberate people from their bondage, to liberate them from the spirit of fear, to liberate them from the spirit of religion, to liberate them from the vagabond spirit. Yes, I said it, to deliver them, Lord, from instability and double-mindedness. Because your word declares that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So tonight, you are free. We're under an open heaven. Live like it, speak like it, talk like it, walk like it. And share this. And don't forget, Jesus is Lord.